Ford V8 engines, the elusive electrical gremlin. You may think a car starts with the key, but when you twist the metal collar on the steering column, a synchronized operation of components merge elements together that ignite rapid fire controlled explosions. The internal combustion engine requires three primary sources to work, air, fuel, and spark. Each resource is delivered by different methods. However, each exhibit their own failure symptom when a problem arises. Today, we are focusing on electrical, more precisely, the ignition system. My 1980 Continental Mark VI is equipped with a carbureted 5.8 liter Ford 351 Windsor V8 engine. Recently, I resolved a problem with the failed ignition system. Over the course of several months, I performed a series of part replacement trial and error sessions. The process started with recalling the symptoms and to track if the behavior would repeat. Before I proceed, it is necessary for me to interject that prior to the vehicle's failure, it gave me little to no warning. In hindsight, I now realize some subtle indications were evident leading up to this point. Therefore, I hope communicating my experience will save you the trouble. If you too have an old car manufactured before onboard diagnostic ports became standard, you'll need to become familiar with distinguishing what type of problem is being presented. First, what you have to remember is electrical problems generally go out like a light switch. Either the connection has a short exhibiting intermittent operation or a total burnout. Whichever the case, symptoms are noticeably different compared to a mechanical failure. Process of elimination. If you're in a tight budget like me and attempt to do your own project car repairs, please listen up. Before you dive in head first, read online automotive forums and search symptoms that may validate your hunch. Narrow down part replacement associated with the problem category, electrical in this case. Practice patience and start with the most probable cause. Online, there will be a multitude of accurate and misguided advice. So stay focused and follow your intuition. I know all this sounds obvious, but patience will save you frustration and money. Symptoms before diagnostic confirmation. One, abrupt engine shut off after confident 10 minute idle. Went from running great to cold turkey. Two, wouldn't turn back on for several hours. Eventually degraded to several days wait. Three, exact same behavior cycle for weeks and then zero. Only starter motor cranking engine. Four, every time I returned the key towards the off position, the engine gave a delayed partial turn. Note, the only subtle indication that this problem began forming was an increase in prolonged startups. Part replacement trial and error sessions. Ignition coil. The ignition coil was widely available at my local auto parts store. They offered everything from a high performance variant to an extended life model. My pick was the most affordable. Therefore, I chose generic. Installation was easier than I expected. The coil is secured by a ring collar tightened with two small bolts and the electrical connection just snapped in the original sleeve. The only difficulty was releasing the original part from the bracket. It might have been fused together with rust. I was confident this repair would solve the problem. My logic was if there's any fluctuation of electricity, it might be why the sudden engine stall. Boot wire set. The advantage of shopping local for certain domestic auto parts is fleeing to online suppliers. These days, a fitted set of traditional spark plug boot wires are a rarity to be found on store shelves. If you're lucky, general use wires in equal length may be available for a suitable solution. Fortunately, I was able to buy just the short wire over the counter, but even then finding the right fit was a treasure hunt. My original ignition coil wire was severely rusted inside the boot. When I saw the rough condition of the connection, I thought maybe the flow of electrical current is being compromised. The installation was a snap and I was confident a reliable source of consistent power is restored. Well, wrong again. Distributor cap and rotor. Off the bat, zero auto parts stores had neither the proper cap or rotor on hand. As a matter of fact, 
One location showed me what might be the Canadian emissions version because it had a narrow rotor and a single contact. The cap was just as useless because the eight points didn't match the alignment of my original equipment manufacturer distributor. Truth of the matter, I hadn't disassembled my distributor beforehand, so it took me by surprise too. The 1980 Continental Distributor Assembly is different than anything I've seen before. Believing a bad connection must still be elusive, replacing this was a reasonable area to target. Nevertheless, I purchased the correct set from eBay Motors. In preparation to install, I labeled every spark plug boot wire according to its clockwise location. You definitely don't want to get this firing order wrong. It will confuse matters even worse. Every part of the upper assembly is held together by metal straps and the rotor just snaps right in. As easy as all this was to install, yes, you guessed it, the turd hunt continues. Ignition module. Ford Sure Spark ignition module was not available locally, only through special order for the proper three pin model. Using a large supplier, I awaited home delivery to only receive the wrong item, four pin, and receive damage for insult to injury. What prompted this purchase was the ongoing repeating symptom that inevitably completely gave up, still believing all indications point to electrical. This would be the brains of the ignition system. Once again, I utilized eBay Motors to locate the OEM new old stock. I was advised this device has a high failure rate, so I purchased two. Tested both with no change in performance meaning the car still didn't work. This time I opt to keep the original module installed on the car and reevaluated my next approach. It was always my intention not to make matters worse if I persist to fix it myself. So the last thing I would ever wanna do is push the envelope on an old car and end up opening Pandora's box. Plenty can go wrong with brutal wires and antiquated equipment. Proceeding with the KISS philosophy. New spark plugs. Replacing all eight spark plugs with Motocraft brand seemed like a clear-cut choice, but at this point in the game, more problems was par for the course. The original plugs from the factory in 1980 were actually Autolite brand. Old-style spark plugs had the starting thread begin at the flat base, immediately above the center electrode. Also, back in those days, it was standard procedure to apply anti-seize to the bare metal threads. Today, modern spark plugs have a reshaped rounded taper base with a shiny coating over the threads to prevent the plug from seizing to the engine cylinder head. After removing the used spark plugs, I examined the condition and noticed they had burned rich and were filed out. When attempting to install the modern Motocraft plugs, I immediately encountered consistent struggle just installing one. No way was I going to complete all eight without making an adjustment. Once again, eBay Motors to the rescue. With one search, I purchased a complete set of Autolite new old stock. What a world of a difference a period correct auto part made. When I tell you easy, I mean smooth as butter. The only obstacle were all the acrobat twists while hugging the engine just to get the right installation angle. Throughout the whole journey, to locate the root of the electrical problem, I tried to avoid the spark plugs for as long as possible. But it would take one more discovery to finally crack this mystery. Reference sensor, engine crank position sensor. After all else failed, I decided to utilize the automotive form if anyone else has encountered the same symptoms with their 351 Windsor V8. As it turned out, an individual with an 80s Bronco fix the exact same problem by replacing the distributor magnetic pickup, stator. The only dilemma for me is my distributor setup is not designed anything like their Bronco. My Continental Mark VI distributor does not use a magnetic stator under the rotor. It became evident to me the SureSpark system must use a different method to stay synchronized with the crank. I knew I was onto something and would stay the electrical course. My final lifeline was to reach out to the car enthusiast community for clarity. There was no one better suited for the job 
than Jake Jackson Doubt from Marks of Distinction. He provided the missing piece of the puzzle by defining the alternative part used in the Continental, named Crank Pickup. What single part specifically failed on my car? Reference sensor, crank, engine crankshaft position sensor, crank pickup. Brand, part catalog. Manufacturer, part number, PC-859918. Amazon, B-0-C-K-7-4. K-N-9-V. Installation location and tools needed. 11 millimeter socket, one bolt securing U-shaped clip. Flathead screwdriver, optional. Unlatch two plastic housing connectors. All connections and installation is performed from the passenger side of the engine bay. Original equipment manufacturer sensor is installed Next to the harmonic balancer, new replacement sensor must be fully inserted and secured using original hardware. Wiring routes up top and is connected into two plastic housing resting under the edge of the carburetor air cleaner. Tips. To unplug plastic connection housing, carefully use flathead screwdriver to release tension on latch. Next, follow through with hands and pull apart both halves of housing to separate. Everything is located and accessible from the passenger side of the engine bay. One thing is for sure, the extra repairs will make my car that much more reliable. No effort has gone wasted. The trial and errors I endured to finally diagnose my project car accurately gave me a greater appreciation for engineers who've evolved the automotive industry. It also reminded me how important the car enthusiast community is and the wealth of information shared. I'd like to give a special thanks to Jake Jackson Dow from Marks of Distinction for your expertise. I hope this video was informative and can help you or someone you know with their project car. Remember to share your experience for the benefit of the car community and auto enthusiasts. Thanks for watching.